Hi everyone and welcome back. So this is the part two of our setup which we are doing for NestJS GraphQL. So in the first video we did all the folder structuring, we did all uh, creating all the different kind of files like for Jest, for testing, for Docker, for creating the Postgres containers. Then we set up the, the hooks using GitHub hooks, using Husky, we set up pretty, prettier and all the configuration part. Now we have started writing the actual code. So here we have created a domain module. In the domain module, we are using config module, type RM module, and the GraphQL module. Okay. What we will do is we will uh, start writing the modules. Let's say let's say we are creating a Pokemon app here. Okay. So what we will do is first we will configure the GraphQL module. So if you look into graphql module dot for root, it is taking all these arguments. We might also need to pass some more argument that we will see. So this is our domain module. Now this domain module can be imported in the app module. I think I have already added this domain module. And now as we already have this container running, Docker compose up, I can just do npm run start dev. And let's see, we are doing the, the live debugging. So if there is any error, we will try to debug this and we will fix that. First thing I see is whenever you are using NestJS GraphQL module, GraphQL module, I think you need to pass the driver. The driver can be Apollo driver or any other driver we, which we are using. Apollo driver is coming from the NestJS Apollo. And we can also use, I think, the other drivers which are specified here. Mercurius that is also we have to use Mercurius driver or Mercurius driver config. So let's see we are running the application and let's see how much it is able to pass. We also need to fix all these different paths like where is the entity for the typo RM where are we keeping all the entity files and for GraphQL modules the type paths are correct or not. And this is the definition it is going to generate by looking at your GraphQL type definitions. It will generate this schema. Okay, let's see. I think it is throwing some error. Yes, error missing driver option in the latest version. I think earlier version driver was not uh, mandatory, but now to allow the integration with the different drivers, you have to pass the Apollo driver because. Here you can also pass the Apollo driver config. The for root method is Apollo driver config. Okay, and for that, I think we have to install some module which we can do. So npm install minus minus save nestjs yes, Apollo. I think this is the module NestJS Apollo and we can get Apollo driver from there. So we need two, two different things Apollo driver and the driver config. And we can pass the driver to the GraphQL module. There is option driver that can be Apollo driver. Now if you look into the for root method, what all option it, it really it accepts. So if I mouse over, for root method implementation, if we look into the types, so it is extending the graphical module options. Inside GraphQL module options, you can see path, type definitions, type, path, and driver. This driver, you can either pass uh, Apollo driver or the Mercurius driver. And all the playground, you can also pass the schema, the resolvers, all these options. I mean, we just need to take care about the required parameters while calling this for root method. Now it is again breaking. I oh okay, we forgot to install because we are using Postgres module and we didn't even install it. So obviously, it's not good. It will break. 
so we will install this another module which is pg postgres so if you are using type rm with the mysql then you have to install mysql type rm with the postgres then you need to install the pg pg is a module okay it will again throw an error so let's go back to our domain module now let's see the difference here this is the documentation so if you are looking for mercurius integration then you should be using mercurius driver and mercurius driver config similarly there is a mercurius driver config here and here we are using apollo driver which is coming from nestjs apollo okay you can also pass the playground true or false based on that it will expose the playground on the graphql route okay so let's see the other things okay i think this is installed this is still taking time okay so now we have postgres pg admin already installed now what we can do is npm run start dev and these are the, uh, our environment variables uh, node env port and database url and this is our domain module and currently we don't have any paths defined right these are the type path where you create a dot graphql files in your different folders where you are creating your resolvers and queries currently it's every folder is empty so let's see how it is going to react with that because I think it will not be able to initialize the GraphQL module if you don't have any type already created in any particular path, at least one type definition already created. Okay, so let's see how we do it. Now, what we are going to do is let's say we are going to create some Pokemon GraphQL APIs where you can see the list, uh, see the list of Pokemons, get the Pokemon by ID, create a Pokemon, and all these things and here we see the error and the error is no type definition were found in this pattern okay because we haven't created one what we are going to do now is let's create something so inside domains folder i think we have domain module here what i will do is i will remove these folders you can still keep the entity and we are going to create a the API is here like in the domain I can create one is Pokemon folder this is the Pokemon domain and another folder I have the league okay and then we will start defining all those things inside this now let's say inside Pokemon if I create the graphical file then my path should be something like this go inside all the folders and look for dot graphql file okay so this syntax will work the type path definition will work here what we need to do we need to create the graphql files now because we are writing graphql uh, nestjs graphql but still the concepts are same you need to create a type graphql file where you define your queries and your mutations and your schema types okay so we are going to the domains and pokemon so i will start creating the files here pokemon dot module dot ts then other important files i will create all of these pokemon dot graphql graphql file and what other files we need we need one service and we need one resolver pokemon.service.ts and then one is resolver file where you will define all the queries and mutation and service will do the will deal with the database getting things and all now this graphql file is important and here we are going to define all our types okay what all types we are using all the types we will put here so these are all our graphical types 
and we are going to use the same syntax type pokemon and here it can contains id as a string and this is required and the name as a string type name id name type and we also have a league for each and every pokemon so we are going to assign the type league this is another type another type which we have to create and now we will define all the queries so in query you see we are going to get all the pokemons it is going to return the array of pokemon but another thing is get pokemon by id so another thing is pokemons it is going to receive id of type id i guess and it is going to return a single pokemon object okay so this is inside our query i think i need to install some graphql plugins so it can beautify this automatically and we have type mutation and inside type mutation you will define all your methods like okay let's say i have a create method create method is taking some argument like there is a name string type string okay these are two arguments let's say it is taking and it is going to return the newly created pokemon then we have update a crud operation you can think of create update and what you will do is you will pass the id of type id and you will pass name is of type string and then this is also required type is also of type string this s is capital in the string when you are defining the graphql type definitions okay so we have type and mutation and then there is a delete delete is taking id only and it is going to return like it can also return another type deleted deleted is a custom type right so you have to define the deleted type which contains only one parameter delete is boolean it will tell you okay deleted true or false okay so there is a pokemon i think this is just a typo okay so we have defined the graphql file i think now if i try to restart this let's see because the league type is not defined okay that is fine so we will try to run this when we have all the type definitions ready so this is the pokemon.graphql now we just need to create a module resolvers and service and inside resolvers we will be using all these methods like create update delete uh, and the resolver will talk to the uh, injectable service that will be dealing with the type orm repositories to fetch delete update all these different kind of operations okay so now let's create the entities so we have two entities here one is a pokemon another is a league uh, i mean and there will be one to many relationship one pokemon can be a part of multiple leagues so we will create entities and what we will do is because these are type rm entities and using repository pattern inside the services we should be able to access these tables the pokemon and the league so there will, there are two entities we are creating one is the the pokemon dot entity dot ts another is the league dot entity dot ts okay and these will be representing two different tables and what you will do is 
after you have written the entities you can enable the type or um, synchronize true so automatically these will be populated in the database let's say if i do synchronize true and you already know the power of this synchronize true means it keeps synchronizing these things with the entities so we have pokemon entity so pokemon entity is simple what it is has is it has a name type and one to many relationship okay league dot pokemon and then there is a league entity league entity is like uh, having many to one relationship with the pokemon i'm just copying this from my template this is the uuid then we have a league name and the league name has a relationship many to one so pokemon has a one to many so inside pokemon pokemon is can have many to one so this is the relationship pokemon entity is having so whatever the type so this league this league will represent a single league for the pokemon but a single league can be assigned to the multiple pokemons so it's one to many and this is uh, many to one okay uh, if i do npm run db sync i can do that manually also okay Uh, let's see it is a type error so we go to graphql and what it is saying is there is a type deleted syntax expected column found name delete okay because currently my project is not complete so i don't know like from where this error is coming okay we will figure this out so here we have a pokemon module pokemon resolver and service now after creating this entity are we pointing to this entity correctly so there is a domain module from domain module what we are looking into is the folder and inside the folder all the files having dot entity dot ts okay so that is good okay this is configured properly you don't have any problem synchronize true so whenever type or module is getting bootstrapped it will check it will synchronize these tables if these tables are not there then it will create both the tables in the database okay after the entities are there we can start creating the pokemon resolver and pokemon service so what do you mean what do you mean what so what i mean is we have to create a pokemon service which will actually use uh, this repository pokemon repository and will do the basic operation dot find find by id update create all these similarly we will define all the methods pokemon service the import, important pa part in this is how we define the resolvers because there we are going to use custom annotations annotation mutation annotation query because we have already seen lot of examples of crud operations even the the different examples i have already covered where we are writing controllers services and helper service here we don't have a controllers here we have the modules resolvers and our service and this is the type definitions okay i am going to have these three different methods exposed in the resolver and i think two queries get uh, get all pokemons get pokemon by id and three different methods create update and delete okay so we can define the other methods here which is like okay async show which will talk about showing all the pokemons and we can use these methods async show async get uh, show by id so we will take id string async get all pokemons and there is update pokemon also based on some id and data 
so this is our service i mean i'm just writing it quickly id and there can be a data of type any while create also i mean it will not be any it will be representing some dto delete pokemon show and now let's start writing these methods okay here we can return whatever is in the table return await this dot what is the repository name pokemon repository let's make it little small pokemon repository dot find give me all the pokemons and here find my id here we are doing find one I mean all these are type or methods and here we are doing where close id is this okay and inside update pokemon first we will do the find one so we will get the pokemon based on the id first if we got the pokemon then we will update it what we need to do is pokemon dot let's say the name which we are getting data from data data dot name data dot type data dot type once we update all the parameters we can simply say await await pokemon dot save so it will save the updated version and you can also return whatever is the Pokemon you have updated. So that is update. Similarly, we can have a delete. Delete will be simply all like this. I think there is a destroy, but a destroy option. What we can do is first we will find one because we also want to return the which Pokemon we have deleted. So we can say this dot Pokemon repository dot delete by ID, I think, and we can pass the ID. And once this is done, we can return the deleted record. And we are not checking if this particular record exists or not. Those are all those things are for error handling cases. What if the record doesn't exist? Then you should throw an exception from here that should be handled at the resolver level. Okay, so here const Pokemon, or let's say we can use this dot Pokemon repository dot create, create empty object, and then set all these parameters. So we created a Pokemon object. We set the name and data type from the data. And then const saved Pokemon and written that. So all these things we are doing. We have create, update, delete, and show get all Pokemons, the basic methods, okay? Now the important part is the resolver, like how we are going to map these service methods with the resolver. We have defined the type definition, the .graphql file where we have specified, okay, this is the Pokemon kind of model and we are specifying two query methods, get Pokemon by ID, get all Pokemon and there are three mutations, create, update, delete. So how the resolver will look like? Resolver is a GraphQL, uh, sorry, NestJS implementation for doing the same thing which we are doing by creating a simple class and defining all the resolvers defining all the mutations and the queries so we are doing it in the same way we will just create a class and we'll use all the all sort of annotations and it will be an injectable class of 
Pokemon Resolver and inside a constructor you will provide the service injection private read only this is Pokemon service okay so we have done the construction injection now we can start using something like this query here we i will write the method okay async pokemons so here this is the query i will i will import this query where it is coming from it should be coming from type graphql or ness is graphql and Pokemon. So what I can do is this dot we have this method. So return await this dot Pokemon service. Same as like in from the controller we used to call service. Now from resolver we are calling the service methods. Get all Pokemons. That's it. So similarly there is another query which is taking ID as an argument. Right. So only the difference will be okay here we are going to pass all the argument and the argument is the pokemon id right so this is how you pass the argument argument and the argument is the id and id is of type string do i need to import something So I need to import argument because argument is the input it's ARGS. I will be getting this from SCS GraphQL. Let's see what is there now. Okay, sorry. This should not come here. This should be a part of the method. Get or get, and I can call the appropriate method that is okay. Get all Pokemon. What is the other method we have? Show method, and it is taking ID. It's better that we should just write get Pokemon. This method is nice and here we are going to call this we will pass the id okay so the i the query methods are done now what we need to do we need to talk about the resolvers i mean the mutation resolvers mutation means you are doing create update and uh, delete so this is simple now instead of query you will start adding the mutation you will start adding the mutation and delete and we'll just import all the required things next is graphql and what method do we have there delete pokemon okay similarly we have the mutation create where we are taking all the arguments like the whole payload body and all name type these are the two inputs we are taking this is the mutation and we are calling the create pokemon with both these arguments and similarly you can write update delete and all now another important part is the resolver annotation here and it's a resolver for which particular entity and that entity you have to specify this is pokemon entity Okay, just fix the imports. Pokemon entity, we can get from the entities and we are done. So this is the resolver. Now, when you import all the resolvers and the services in the main module, all these things will get resolved. So here is our Pokemon module. It's empty. Here we are using type or a module dot four feature. Pokemon entity because we are accessing Pokemon entity and these are the providers. We can also export them if it is needed. 
Okay, and this is our Pokemon module. Okay, where it is the Pokemon entity. Let's import these things. And this resolver is defined. We are done. So this is the Pokemon. Pokemon module. Pokemon module is taking these two services, Pokemon service and resolver. We don't have a controller because controller is for REST API router. Here we are writing GraphQL APIs. This is the type definitions, varies mutations and all. Similarly, same thing you will do on the league. Here you will create dot GraphQL. Okay, and you will define the types. And inside type you will specify Okay, this is my type league, which I'm using in the Pokemon also. And here I will specify type query. I will specify type mutation. And inside I will just define our create league, update league, delete league. These are the three methods I have inside mutations, which are actually updating the resources. And when it is coming to, when it comes to fetching the resources, I can fetch all the leagues or a single league by ID. So my type definition is simple. Now similarly, I will create a resolver and a service. Right, this is same as like the Pokemon resolver and Pokemon service. The whole agenda is to understand the whole flow, how it is really working. And then I will just uh, update this uh, league module with uh, league resolver and league service. And then we will see the whole demo together that how these all these pieces are combining and bootstrapping our GraphQL server where we can actually create the Pokemon, uh, fetch all the Pokemons, fetch Pokemon by ID and create a league, assign the league to a Pokemon, all these kind of operations. Okay, so we have already created league.graphql. These are like the type definitions. We have type league and these are the queries and these are the mutations. And respective to the, to the league, I have created a service and the resolver. I mean, that service is simple, which is just doing a CRUD operations, create league, uh, get all the leagues or update a particular league or delete a league. The same kind of operations which we have done in the Pokemon service, where we are actually creating Pokemon, deleting, updating and getting all the Pokemon and getting a Pokemon by ID. So how we are doing it? So there are three important things. First of all, you have to define the dot GraphQL file, define all your types, queries and mutations. You, and you can also create a custom type like custom type like this. Here what I'm saying through this query is give me Pokemons. So it is going to give you the array of all the Pokemons and that is going to have these attributes. Pokemon by ID, it is going to give us a single object. And when you do the create update delete, create update should return the Pokemon object and delete should return the boolean delete, which is true or false. Similarly, the league.graphql, here we have the league as a type and we have two things, query mutations. You can also have a subscriptions here inside a query league, give me all the leagues, league by ID, create league should return a league, update league. So create league should take a input name and return a newly created league. Update league based on the ID and I'm passing the name. Delete league, I'm deleting the Pokemon league, that's it. And after this .graphql file, the another important thing is the service and the resolver, first resolver. In the resolver, we are defining the annotations like query, mutations and automatically these get mapped, these are getting mapped to the GraphQL definition query. You know, it is not taking any argument and what it is doing is, okay, give me all the leagues. Here there is another query where we are taking the argument ID as an input and returning the league by ID. Here the mutation, delete league, update league, create league. So if you look into this method, create league, update league, delete league, all are getting mapped to the resolvers, right? So we have leagues and this is the pokemon all these are actually mapped to the 
our resolvers. So what do you think about the Pokemons? How it is getting resolved to this Pokemon array? So that is getting defined in this resolver. So this is the Pokemon and these are the leagues. So leagues means give me all the leagues Pokemon and here we are just passing the ID okay give me the league based on this particular ID. The rest all are mutations create update delete. Here also if you look at the resolver Pokemon resolver here also we have all these methods the Pokemons uh, create update delete and if you look into the GraphQL here also we have a create update delete Pokemons and Pokemon. So we have Pokemon and this is the Pokemons. So there is a kind of a mapping we are trying to establish and the imp another important part is in the Pokemon entity because there is a one to many relationship we have and here we are doing eager fetch that means while doing a dot find dot find by id you don't need to provide a relations in type ORM to fetch the the foreign key relationship data it is actually it is setting the relations to eager that means when you do the dot find it will fetch the uh, the foreign key table data also with that otherwise you have to do uh, fetch comma relations and pass the relations in that okay so this is all about this the important part is the mapping of the resolvers with your type definitions which we are doing here the the mapping of leagues league and so these mappings should be appropriate okay now the another part is let's do npm run start and we are doing type rm synchronization true so what it means is whenever we are making synchronize true and when you do npm run start dev it will always synchronize uh, your entities with the database so if i look into the database you can see i do have a league table this is a simple structure and i have a pokemon pokemon has the foreign key and it is having the league ID which is talking to which is a foreign key I mean uh, this league ID is a foreign key from the league table here we do have name and ID so this ID which is a primary key here is a foreign key in the Pokemon table so if you look at the structure this is the league ID we are passing. Okay, so this is the database relationships. Now we can start this. Let's see how it goes. If your type definitions are correct, then you should be able to start it in one go. Otherwise, let's say you did some typo and all these things, then you have to resolve them. And here you can see it is also keep synchronizing. If you change anything in the entities, this is a type or sync automatically synchronize. So our tables are ready. Now we can start looking at the GraphQL definitions. I have already imported both the modules here. Pokemon modules and the league module. And now we can see this. So there are different type of uh, GraphQL clients you can use. By default, when you hit this GraphQL, you will see something like this. And here is your schema. You can see the, the league. These are the queries. These are mutations. Now it has combined all the queries and the mutations together. So this is the schema. These are the queries and mutations. Let's say, give me all the leagues, give me a league by ID, give me all the Pokemons, give me a single Pokemon, mutations, create, update, delete league, create, update, delete Pokemon. And this is the Pokemon type and the deleted custom types. So here we can start writing the queries and mutation but i am lazy i don't want to write the queries and mutation i can use this client this is this will give you a single click execution so this is altair client and you just put this url click docs it will download the docs and you should start seeing all the queries mutations and here let's say i want to create so this is what mutation Let's clear this out first and you go here and click add query. It's simple. Hello. So uh, till now we have seen how this is going to work. We are able to start the NSGS application. 
and we were able to see uh, the GraphQL spec uh, through the browser. Now, next thing, next next important thing we are going to do is assigning the the league ID to the Pokemon. Till now, the Pokemon and the league entity both are independent. I mean, there is a relationship, but through the GraphQL queries, we are not associating them. So, what we are going to do is we are going to create a assign mutation, which will take two IDs. One is the Pokemon ID, another is a league ID. Okay, and we will same we will create a method inside a service. What that service method will do is it will uh, find the Pokemon based on the Pokemon ID and it will assign the league object to it. So it's like we are going to define the relationship and this assign method assign the league ID to the Pokemon we are going to expose through the mutation. So to do this we have to use the, the repository. We have to import the league repository inside Pokemon service and for that uh, we can copy this from the league entity here and we'll paste it inside a Pokemon service. Here inside this service we are using two repositories. So we have to do some updates in the module also because currently type ORM.4 feature we are doing passing only Pokemon entity. But now we are also using the league entity inside the Pokemon module. So there will be a dependency injection error if we don't import that we will see. So here what we are doing is we are doing a find operation. First find Pokemon then find one league and then Pokemon.league equal to the league. So this is how we are actually updating the existing Pokemon record and assigning the league to that and then we will return the Pokemon object. So this assign league method we are going to expose through the mutation. So if we are adding a new method we are adding it in the service then obviously we have to add the same method inside a resolver and inside resolver we are going to use the same mechanism like we have to define the annotations annotation mutation and assign method so here we can see inside the resolver we'll just copy this method mutation and we will just change it and here we are going to use assign it is going to take two argument one is the pokemon id another is a league id and we don't have type so we have two arguments and now we can call the simple service method which is pokemon service dot assign league that is a method we have so here we are just correcting the arguments and then we can just call the method so we need to pass two arguments here assign league and we are passing the pokemon id and the league id now through the basic queries and mutation we can create create pokemon create league and then we can use this assign method to associate the league to a pokemon so that we can also see the aggregated data where pokemon should have the league and league league list i mean the the list of leagues also start populating the pokemon data okay the another important part we have is the eager fetch there is a many to one relationship between Pokemon and uh, League and how to fetch the data like whenever we do a dot find automatically it is going to fetch the data because we are doing the eager fetch and here we can see we are able we are getting this error because we are not passing the another entity for Pokemon module so what we will do is we will copy the League entity inside Pokemon module and we will pass that inside a type ORM module dot four feature so that this league entity is identified in the Pokemon module and our application will be healthy again. So till now we have created this assign method which is assigning the league to a Pokemon ID, Pokemon record. First we need to create a Pokemon, create a league and then pass both the IDs in, in this assign method and this is how it is going to work. So here we have created uh, the assign method. This is our resolver. And similarly, we also have updated the service. So this is creating error. Let's see what it is. Expected colon found bracket. So let's take a look onto the GraphQL file because it's it, this error shows it is something to do with the uh, schema. So I think we forgot to return uh, from the assign method now I think when we restart it should be able to resolve this error. One more important thing in this example is we are doing a two-way relationship but in the GraphQL files 
we should we should do this relationship one way only like uh, we are specifying the pokemon in the league entity league model and the league model in the pokemon right so it's kind of a cyclic dependency we are creating when we are fetching pokemon we can fetch the the leagues when we are fetching the leagues we can fetch the pokemons but do not make that property required okay let's see we are starting the server again and let's see that in the graphql spec how we can assign the league to a pokemon here you can see this is the schema file which is getting generated when whenever we are starting the application this file is automatically generated based on whatever the graphql files we have written whatever the type definitions we have created like the pokemon the league and all the queries all the mutations and this is the method these are the methods which are exposed through the graphql playground and here we can see uh, we can see the latest mutation which is assign assign is taking two ids id and the league id and what we can do is here we are creating a league we can just put a, some new name this is creating a league we will copy this id and copy it and put it somewhere so that we can reuse this id while doing the assign okay now we can we we can talk about the create pokemon we are passing the name and here we will create the pokemon independently through the this mutation we got the id now we can use the assign here what we are doing is we are passing the pokemon id and the next id is the, the league id so both we are copying and we will trigger this mutation this will define the relationship this is what it should do and this is the error i was talking about because the league is dependent on pokemon pokemon is dependent on the league i mean while defining the types we should not make these property required so you can see the pokemon dot league value here that is required because currently there is no association happened so inside league inside the pokemon type should be optional so it should not throw any error here we are able to assign now we can query the league the list of leagues and we can see what we are getting i mean ideally we, if uh, the the database ids are populated correctly we should be able to see the data but looks like that is not happening we are not able to see the pokemon inside the league objects it is coming empty array so we need to check the code what is happening maybe it looks like the assign method whatever the logic it was executing that didn't process things properly we can also check the the list of pokemons with the league is it populating the leagues with the pokemon and here you can see not all pokemons has a league and what we have done is we have marked league required inside a pokemon so we have to make the league optional in the pokemon type pokemon model type then it will just work as expected so now next thing we need to check the code where it is breaking there should be some condition which is not correct even in the database we can also check the record if uh, the foreign key is populated correctly or not first of all make this optional so inside pokemon league is optional because league id in the pokemon is nullable field not every pokemon will have a league assigned okay and we should avoid this cyclic dependency and keep argument optional if we want to do it now we let's find out where is the error so if we check the database inside database we can see this league id is empty that means while doing the assignment things didn't go the right way we go to the service and here we will check okay looks like we found the error this id should not be the pokemon id it should be the league id right because we are doing a find on the league entity and then assign that league to the pokemon record now we will restart the application and again try the assign method through the mutation and this time i think we should be able to assign the, the league id to the pokemon record we will again try the same mutation assign we have the league id and we have the pokemon id we'll pick any random pokemon id and uh, we'll also create one league we can 
pick some league from this league ID we already have somewhere saved we will use it and we'll just pass it okay we'll run the mutation now the assignment should work but I think our application is not started so wait and watch okay application is started and we can see this has been executed and now we can also check in the database and now we see the league id is populated now we will we can do the query like give me the list of leagues one of the league records would have the pokemon inside it so we will just say give me the list of leagues and one of the the league object should have the pokemon records inside it so this will show all the leagues and you can see the first record it is showing pokemon so this is how we are doing the aggregation first of all we are doing the eager fetch from the entities second we are doing the aggregation through these graphical queries and mutation okay so this is how it works let's catch up in the next video thanks everyone